We are now on to our second project. Guess what it is? Top rail linear X. So the prototype is coming along really well and it's looking good. Designed it in a way that it maintains existing components of what's on the machine with minimal upgrades. I'm going to use my carbon fiber rod, but I think it's going to be an idea to get a longer rod that goes further because at the moment we're only using one of the four mounting holes because the rail is not long enough and that's an existing rail for the machine. So it will work with it, but I want it to go all the way to the edge. As these bolts aren't really bolts, they're going to be pins and they're 40 mil long so they stop in the middle. The new version that's printing has push through holes here. As you can see in the sliced version, there are the holes that start off at 3 mil and then they go all the way up to 5 mil or 5.2 for the pins at 40 mil in length. There we go, got them printing in both ABS and in PLA. Testing out a bit of color in PLA just a prototype to make sure they're okay and it means I can prototype faster. It's pretty crazy to consider when I was starting I aborted the job because I made changes and then I printed them and these ones are working great however they are really chunky and they have additional bolt holes to bolt through and I don't think it's really required. As you can see they add a lot of weight and a lot of chunk so we trim them down and now we're looking like this. This one's got a major fold on it. This is meant to be cut away, but that's happening on the uh, version that's printing. Got our development happening on our top axis X-Rail. I've just got it sitting here on the small gantry. Got our washers in and I've got our pins bolts. I might actually use these bolts over pins because these things are really cool. The one I need for this side here is 40 mil. So these are actually a 50 mil bolt, but once we cut them down to 40 mil in length, they will be awesome. And we've got the full shaft covering where the idlers and the tooth teeth go. Using an MGM9 linear rail. We've got some nice green parts printing. One for the dragon flow hot end, the tall coolant duct and some other parts. This will be our first build from the VZ Bot 330 repo for the hot end. Very excited to get this on this machine. Just doing some major upgrades. What we're doing at the moment is the x-axis. We are putting it under the gantry so it actually sits up right underneath it as opposed to in front of it. So there's a nice little mod for that. To make it fit, I need to shorten my chain because mine was excessively long. Looking at the height of this, I think that's more than enough. As well as when it sits flat, it's clear of both of the motors. So I'm gonna wind that in. It's a cool little trick. You just wrap electrical tape back on itself so it still slides and it just keeps it a little bit tidier. I just opted to have the chain go there and then I don't have to do much modification for my cable. I'll be able to bend that around in a nice slack loop. Amazing, we're looking really good. We've got the chain installed. I'm not using any mount. Next part is this for the umbilical. This is the umbilical part, clips in front, and I've drilled it out to take a massive hole because I've got a big fat wad of cables. So the cable is sitting tucked under and very clean got our umbilical mount unit that I've drilled out to 9mm to take this massive water cables because pretty much all these cables have to go except two that are behind here that run down for my magnetic end stops but I might not end up using these so we'll see but still that's a big fat wad of cable that I'm going to have umbilical going to the top and then running down here to the head and I want to get that running on this build before we put on the new tool head. We've got this on. This thing's been drilled out behind to 9mm 
and I know it's not touching because there's lots of slack on that and maybe you can just see if we change the angle plenty of slack I need to get this cable sitting in front now I can unwind it from the tool head all through the chains but it's a real pain I think I'm just gonna undo this belt it's just two bolts the belt comes out and then I can feed it under and reattach the belt I think that's gonna be the easiest way Got our belt off, now we just gotta reroute it and retention. It's got super loose. I did cut my belts very short, so it was a real pain, but it's not so bad because I've had these belts in this machine for ages, so they've got a memory. Nothing like toilet paper to hold up your QGL. This thing is so floaty. When it's um when it's lost power, it just sinks. Now we got this on the inside of this belt I am going to undo the chain and separate the cable that runs here and then have this cable loose dangling in the middle so I'm gonna pop out all the little pins that I never did on my machine was close up all my cable ties they're just loose so I can just pull them out there we go just the heat from the machine they uh, hold their shape and their position see so the first half is done I've got the cable out and separated for the optical sensor running down here, so that still runs in here. This is going to be our umbilical. We just got to do from here to the hot end and figure out how we're going to attach it up and daisy chain it across to over here. The old chain off did have a double sided tape to here because it was a carbon fiber. So now we just got to put some more tape on it that slides smooth so there's no tension. So we've just taped up the umbilical cable at the back, but it's still loose. Got it running along. I'm going to tape it. I'm going to build a mount for this temporarily. And then I'm going to mount this along to so far. And then I'll figure out the rest. And my cable is actually really long. So I've got lots of it. So we've got our umbilical here. It is attached to where the tape is. So the cable's in here. It's difficult to thin but they actually, uh, they actually do slide when you pull on them so they are not rigid, which is good. Not so happy with this, but it gets us somewhere. Not so happy with this, but it uh, gives us a functional machine until I come up with an idea. But this is just gonna slop forward and this will sit there, so I think we'll be okay. I think it looks pretty good. Just for reference, this is the x-axis change. 67 grams, that's a fair amount of weight. Every gram counts. Let's start it up and see if it still works. Little macro I made. Finally figured out how you add stuff to this screen. Our first home, nothing's changed really. Everything's still in alignment as it should be. For the real fun stuff, we've got our top mounted X-Rail. At the moment I've just got it running on my top backing block. I'm just testing the belts to check the alignment of this pulley to this pulley and the belts. I worked it all off CAD so it should all be correct but you know mistakes happen. So I'm just checking everything out. Uh, it's got some dummy belts on it so I can pull it and tension it. Rolls and runs really smooth. And I didn't even have to adjust the horizontal, but I will gantry it when I put it on for proper. And this top rail is a bit rubbish. You can see it does have uh, does have a very slight wobble on this linear rail. It's not a good one, but I'm going to test it out and see what it's like. We've got our umbilical behind running. Just got to cut these wires to match into these wires here. And I think this is going to be killer. Got our printer on the side because we're going to do a end stop mod. Nice and clean and tidy in here. Well now that we've got sensorless homing going, off comes the side chain and off comes the end stop sensor, hole sensors, and off comes the magnets, and I'll be needing these for my clicky probe. Oopsie daisies, 
I took out this screw, but because I got carbon fiber, the bolt that holds it has just fallen through into the caddy. So I won't be taking the other one off. I'll just leave this on for now because I'm not ready to change my hot end, but it's coming soon. The old sensor, hole sensor. Just wrap the cable up here because you never know, I might need that to run through here for some of the other cables if they ever have a failure. And it just sits neatly tucked away at the back. Looking at how this cable chain works, right? This internal cable chain only needs to be for the X and Y motors. I can remove this umbilical because at the moment the cable goes here and then it goes all the way up. This chain needs to go all the way up to the roof and then it needs to run along the roof to here and then it becomes umbilical. And I can do that by using the XY chain, mounting it at the back of the printer in front of the thing to the very top. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna separate out the AB motors and use them in the existing chain that's there now, but I'll probably use the other chain because it's a bit smaller and we'll see how we go from there. Worst case scenario, I can pump all the cables on the outside of the machine because they're just running the umbilical. So that's something to think about. Here we are back at it again. Got our XY cable separated and we're gonna use the small cable chain for that. And then we've got another cable chain which uses the original mount and that's gonna be fixed going vertical. So I'll get them wired up and show you what it looks like. Okay, so we've got the back chain attached. And now we're doing the front chain, which is going to sit vertically all the way up. And I'll make a mount for that. And something to note is the width of this chain is the same width as this. I don't think it's just marginally thicker. But worst case, I can put the cables on the outside if this doesn't work. So let's get this installed. So something like this. We've got our AB motor on the back sitting underneath. And then this chain sits in front to the top and now we just got to get this cable thinking of going through the plastic running it across the top and then we can have a nice support at the top and then it's the umbilical down defeats the purpose of this hopefully this chain can go low enough for our new hot end and these cables here are a little bit twisted they got intermingled and I couldn't unseparate them, but I think that'll be okay. I'll just cable tie that down a little bit like that. I think this looks pretty good. Got my cable chain here, bolted to the ceiling. That's gonna connect up there, so this chain can run through it. As you can see here, we're just using M3 screws with nuts. It's pretty messy. And if you wanted more height, well, you could just run your pipe through and run it on the roof. So. I couldn't handle it. I want the cable chains on the outside and all the tanglement and I needed to shorten the cable. So this cable is going to be punched through here, coming around so all these cables will go through, punching here. And it's going to disconnect that tool head. I've moved this cable chain to the top so the cables will come up here and go across the top. So let's get this disconnected from the tool head and wind them all back. We've got our cables routed through here, held on to the nice Voron logo. I decided not to drill through because I had the USB ports accessible. And then we've got the cables running up the side to the top. There's very much a jungle here, so if the cables running up the top, they will then run through there and then they will droop down into the hot end. So let's get those cables mounted. So this is prototype. We've got the cable running off the hot end up through the top here, it's just got a nice soft bend on it and filed edges across the back, down the back, all the way to the bottom. So as we run along the back to the bottom and then into our awesome power supply. So it's just cable tied, it's a twist tie, had to extend some cables so it looks alright. I'm going to turn it on and see how it works. Let's do our first home. It's pretty high up at the moment. It's very clean, it's very tidy. 
this is fantastic. It's working. Always got to watch the first home after a big change. Just drilling our carbon rail here. We've got our six mil holes drilled in the end of the rail, which I'll show you after. And I'm just about to drill these holes here. I think there's five going across and they fall in line with the VZ mounting rail. I might even leave this inside it. It doesn't weigh much. But we'll get this all drilled up and mounted and see how we go. And I'm just using my rubbish linear rail for the guide. But I've still got it taped up so I don't wreck it. You can't see it but it's inside there, the track. Just had my little finger holding it. We have made some massive progress in upgrades and building. We have got the Dragon High Flow Ultra on this bad boy. And we've got our belts on. We've redesigned these ends so they are sitting perfectly aligned with the 695 bearings and the tooth pulley at the front and the carbon fiber tube with the insert and bolts on the top and bottom with our rail carbon tube things are looking very clean out so this is a full gantry with all the bolts and everything including belts so for the whole system we're sitting at 700 and just under 740 grams for the whole system that is ultra light I am very happy Ooh. So what happens when we get our hot end near the end? Oh, I'm just hitting on the uh, the rail, don't fall me off pin. Oh. oh, we're hitting on the belt, that's right. The first thing to hit is the uh, belt clip at the back. So I've got to put a little end stop here. So probably when it gets to about here, it'll hit a stop. It's got, it's got to make a bit of plastic that sits along. I was thinking of putting a longer bolt in. If I put a longer bolt in there, that's about the perfect position on the rail for it to stop. Uh, crap. Well, no better time to change it than now. Just found out this fan is not working, but the cable is working. So it's failed from here to here. Well, that's all right. I'm going to pull all this apart, give it a weight, cut the cables, and get the new one installed. So the standard Voron hot end with the afterburner, the MGM-12 with carbon rod. 1.1 1 .1 kilo very heavy very cool and that's without the uh, I'm running umbilicalis so that's cool nice comparison before I go too far down the path of no return I need to make sure that my existing belts that I cut really short when I bought it are long enough or if I need to buy new belts it's super good to know I've cut my belts really short and I've got plenty of slack so what it means is, I've got these right on the edges, on the insides. What it means is, I can attach these back belts first and I can weave them on the inside as opposed to the outside and have a little bit hanging out. But at first I'd attach these, I'd attach these first because at the moment I'm going to have all this excess so I don't want any excess here, I want that all to sit at the back. But good to know I don't need new belts. I thought I could get away with using my really cheap Chinese MGM-9 rail but now that I've got everything mounted you can see how bad this rail really is. So I put my finger on the uh, hot end you can see that slop. Oh, that is terrible. Okay, so my rail's got too much slop in it and I'm not happy. And I've got a spare rail here and a spare one here. It's just a bit of work to get it out. So what I've got to do, I've got to replace this fan with a different one. I've got to replace this rail with this rail because these have got no slop in. I've got to pull it all apart. I've got to put it all back together and I'll mount these things first. So I've got a lot of work to do. And I'm going to do that tomorrow because I am wrecked. So we've got a bit of a problem. I think I've got to use this version, which is a bit steeper which will give us more angle to keep that back off the bed. But apart from that, things are looking pretty good. We've got our temporary end stop. We've got to sort out the back because at the moment it's colliding on here. But we're hitting our end stop and we've still got to add our switch, which I haven't wired up yet. But it's working. So after a massive hack job, we got the cables done, 
got gantry all mounted. We got our clicky probe sitting back here. This is another hack job, had to hack all this away and make it work. But it's pretty good. It clips in nicely. It's got enough spacing for when we push the head back. So if that sits over the probe. So we've got enough space so we can do a home and then we can back off and then we can do the and then we can go down and then we can grab the probe and I think that probe might not. I've got to adjust all that but it's pretty good off the bat. Okay let's see how good we are let's do a home. We should go to the edge and then back off 114. That's not good. That did not do what I wanted it to do. So let's do another home on this and it should go and then come off 114 which is in line with my end stop and it won't hit the uh, probe. That is working. We'll do the uh, Y home. Open the probe and go down. So it's so Perfect. And now I should be able to dock the probe. Well, the printer, it works great. It'll home, it'll pick up the probe, it'll do a QGL, it'll do a bed probe. But I still need to print different parts because the heights of this are wrong. The other great adventure I've been having with the probe is to get a probe and a mount that actually mount. And for some reason, the whole spacing is different on some of them. But I made it work. Turns out I got this version working. So now the magnets at the bottom, you can just see, are sitting higher than the cooling duct. Even on the side angles, uh, it's looking very clean. Got a bit of the cables cleaned up. Well, that's what I call cleaned up anyway. I'm happy with how these cables are sitting for a few prints. Just aligning up the head to the probe. It's sitting just fractionally too high, so we'll have to do some bending magic to make that fit. A bit of magic I had to do was add a little spacer to get this to sit vertical. And that's working now for me. We can home, X and Y, and Z, and if we attach the probe, we can see the probe is nicely attached, and if we dock the probe, It works awesome. Run a QGL. It's running, doesn't always make the click. Emergency print, hopefully this works. The issue we got, we got this fan mount which is meant to be made out of aluminium or carbon fibre and it's just so flimsy and as you know it attaches to this sitting on this angle like this and it's just so flimsy mate, look at that. Uh, I've got a fat man printing. That's a fat man. Well can it print? Yes sir it can. Not fast at the moment, this is running on my old afterburner settings. Doing a gyroid infill at 180% of my standard profile. This thing zips around.
so the base conclusion is the top mount X-ray works and it works fantastic. My printable area is very big. My printable area is 336 by 324 on a 350 by 350 build and the height of 275 until the umbilical really starts to play an issue. So that's a print bed. But yeah, overall it's fantastic. I'm very happy and it's only still very early days and I got a lot of tuning to do but it's definitely printing faster, quieter and smoother than it did out of the box. I'm really gonna miss this guy in here. We've done a lot of hours.